Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is a light and a lamp. You, God, are a shield and our salvation. You are strength and our hope. In you is honor and riches, God. You open your hand and you feed every living thing. You are our daily bread. So we come before your word. Perfect law of liberty. Fill us with a hunger and thirst for righteousness because your word says, Blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Father, we stand before you as people who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Fill us, we ask this, to the glory of your Son. Amen. Amen. I want to give you guys a bit of information tonight and before we go to the Bible study. We're going to walk through the whole chapter of Numbers, and it's an interesting thing. It's almost like a review, but I want you to know that as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there are some signs, there are some people that come into the sanctuary, they come into my office, and you can tell right away they're not reading God's word. People who, every time the worship is on, are so broken over their own sin. They're weeping and crying. And listen, that's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. But what it is, is a sign they're not reading the word. Because there's a brokenness that's good when it occurs, but there's a wholeness to know that God has done this. You have to not only be broken before God, but made whole in God. Do you understand that? When somebody is constantly wanting to get saved, I make an altar call and they stand up every week. It's a sign. They're not reading God's word. They're not being washed. You see, God's word, it's supernatural. It's perfect. It's powerful. It has... Hold your place in Numbers. Turn to the right a few pages to Psalm 19, if you will, please. Psalm 19. Listen to what David wrote about God's word. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their word to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice as a strong man to run his race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Please give me your attention. He says that God's word It's like the sun that rises over the horizon. It lifts up and everything is before it. So them that need warmth are warmed. But them that scatter like cockroaches will scatter like cockroaches. Nothing is hidden from God's word. Continuing on, verse 7, he says, The law of the Lord, it's perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. And in keeping them, There is great reward. Please give me your attention again. The Word of God. You know, that thing that sat on my table growing up that nobody ever opened, that book that you could have killed a criminal with, that book that's so neglected, you can't exhaust the knowledge contained therein. If you look at Psalm 119, don't turn there, just... Look at that sometimes. David wrote 170 plus verses. Everyone just extolling the virtues of God's word. Jesus Christ in John 1 is the word made flesh. He said he is the bread which came down from heaven. That each and every day there was enough for you to take in. What does that have to do with tonight's study you might ask? 
Glad you did. Chapter 26, the book of Numbers. And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. Please give me your attention. Wait a second. I've heard that exact same verse. Where did I hear that? I know. I'll read it to you. Numbers chapter 1. Starting in verse 1, he wrote, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the houses of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male. Wow. Forty years later, he's about to do the same thing. Why is he doing that? Another sensational question. You guys got great questions tonight. Verse 3, chapter 26, the book of Numbers. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Now listen. Let me set up what I'm doing. I'm setting you guys up for something. Here's what I'm going to do, and I'm telling you in advance, so when I get all giddy and silly, you'll know why. I'm going to read about the people and the places and the things that we as a church have studied for the last six months. And I'm going to go, oh, you don't remember that? Oh, you don't know that? And what I'm going to try to do is set a spark in your heart. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to be like a flint. I'm going to try to spark your heart so that tomorrow morning when you wake up, you go, man, i got to read that story. i got to see that story. Because listen to me, please. Without this book, not in your hand, not on your nightstand, not in your table, but in your eyes, in your heart, in your spirit, you will grow weak, you will grow afraid, you will be as a sheep without a shepherd. And it don't matter how many times you come to church. And it don't matter how many times you sat down with your pastor. Unless you have, let me explain it to you this way. This book is a love letter. And you know who it's written to? The one whom he loves. If you're not saved and you read this book, you're never going to get it. The scholars can't exhaust and can't figure out why it says this and why. They can read it all they want without the spirit of the living God upon them. As the Bible says, that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. However, even if you are saved, without feeding yourself and nourishing yourself, There is nothing more sad than somebody whose destination is heaven, but yet has no road map. And they wander from place to place to place to place with no strength and no courage, no backbone and no direction, no ministry. And their life is a testimony of bad relationships, bad money choices, bad etc., 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 Because you've not read the word of God and not let it penetrate you and nourish you and strengthen you. I heard it put like this. You guys that have been a part of this church, you've heard this story. Guy goes to war, leaves his wife and kid home. He says, baby, I'm going to write you every single day. Every day, there's that mailman with the letter. Here's your letter. Opens it up. I love you. I miss you. Every day, there's that mailman. Well, what happens is the woman falls in love, madly and crazy in love, with the mailman. (laughs) Don't come here and fall in love with this mailman. Come in here and fall in love with this mailman. Continuing, verse 5. Reuben... The eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben. Listen, give me attention. I said Reuben. 
What does that do in your heart? When I said the 12 children, does anybody not know? Listen to this story. This is phenomenal. There's a guy named Abraham, right? He's 90 years old. He has a son named Isaac. Isaac meets this woman, Rebecca. They have a child, two of them, one named Esau, one named Jacob. Jacob, the word means heel catcher, deceiver, supplanter. God meets him in the wilderness, changes his name from supplanter, deceiver, heel catcher to Israel, which means prince of God or governed by God. Jacob has 12 sons. The firstborn is named Reuben. The stories of these 12 sons will absolutely blow you away. Read through the book of Genesis to see what his 12 sons become. You could actually go all the way to the end and find out that the descendants of all of his 12 sons play a huge part in the last days where there's 144,000 from every one of them who go out and disciple the entire earth, who go out and try to make disciples of the whole earth, all these Jewish people. You didn't know that? You need to know that. Because how it'll change your life and knowing that will be more than the price of admission. Continuing. Now this gets a little monotonous, but stay with me because it's fun. Hanak, of whom cometh the family of the Hanakites, Palu, of the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites, of the families of Reubenites, that they were numbered of them, were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. So the first thing he says is the males, twenty years old and above, that descended from Reuben, who are in this wilderness place, are forty three thousand seven hundred and thirty. Okay? And sons Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. This is the Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they strove against the Lord. You guys know that story? We studied that just a couple of months ago. Incredible story. This guy Korah, he comes up to Moses. We don't need you to speak for God. We can hear from God ourselves. And with him is Dathan. Dathan and his whole crew, he's following him. And he goes, oh, really? And Moses says to him this, you know what? Why don't you come back tomorrow and we'll let God decide who he's choosing to lead these people. So he comes back the next day. Dathan is with Korah, who has 250 people with him. And they pray. Moses and Aaron, they fall down the ground. They pray, God, who are you going to choose? You know what happens? The ground cracks open and swallows them all up. Closes back up. God made a pretty definitive choice there, don't you think? (laughs) Now, I want you to know something. Although we call them stories, they're not like stories, like, like you call stories the, uh, uh, on TV, you know, your um, fiction? They're not fairy tales. Soap operas. Who says soap operas? Good job. The soap operas, they call them stories. This is not soap operas. These are real life things that happen, guys. You're reading not just history, but his story. This is incredible. Continuing. Verse 10. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when the company died. What time the the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. I like that. That he didn't judge. Sometimes he judges the children with the fathers. This time he said, you know what? I was mad at Korah, but I wasn't mad at his kids. I let them live. I like that. Every once in a while he does something like that. The sons of Simeon. Simeon's another one of the sons. After their families, Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, Jamin, the family of Jaminites, Jachin, the family of Jachinites, Zerah, the family of the Zerites, Shaul, the family of Shaulites, the families of Simeon, 20 and 2,200. Now right now you could be asking, how do you know those names so well? Is Is it hard to pronounce them? Listen, I've been reading the same 60 verses of this chapter for four weeks now. Because first we had Owen preach, and then last week we had Bill Gallatin preach, right? So, you know how many weeks I've had practice? I also cheated a little bit. (laughs) This is what's called the Bible Dictionary. For you guys, when you get serious about studying God's Word, you're going to need tools. You're going to need things that help you. You can't just read God's Word and go, I have all of the revelation I need to... Let me, let me word this properly so I don't confuse anybody here nor create a religion. Listen, everything for godliness 
and strength and nourishment is in God's Word. And if you never chose to use any other things, you still have everything you need for that. However, to do some studies that will take you a little bit deeper into the Greek and Hebrew, it's like Pastor said today. It was Ken Graves who, who said that to both of us. He said, yeah, I know a little Greek and I know a little Hebrew. Greek owns a restaurant over there. Hebrew owns a dry cleaners over there. But you can study the original words and the original meanings. This is what's called a Bible dictionary. Now, what's really cool about a Bible dictionary, if you want to look up Reuben... You look up, you go to the R's, R-U-E, and there it is. Not only all of the background information on where Reuben exists in the Bible, but some of these good dictionaries also have what's called church history. Not biblical writings, but church history. Church history is not something you study and read and meditate on, but it's something that you keep in your knower, such as Peter being, baptized, being um, crucified upside down. Now, do we know for a fact absolutely he was? Well, there is history books that say that, and that's church history, but it's not in the Bible that he was crucified upside down. It is in the Bible where the Lord said that he would be led. It was a, one of the... Um, one of the uh, greatest prophecies that our Lord Jesus said was someday they're going to take you and they're going to lead you to where you don't want to go, so forth and so on. You guys are understanding there's so much here and there's so many tools at your disposal to know these things. But continuing on, because this is a long way to go. The sons of Simeon, after their families, Nemuel, where did I finish up? Uh, 15. No, 14. These are the families of the Simeonites, 20 and 2,200. The children of Gad, after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shuni, the family of the Shunites, of Ozni, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arod, the family of Aradites, of I- Arili, the family of the Aralites, of the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, 40,500. Now the sons of Judah were Er and Onan, and Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Give me your attention. Great story. Great story. Judah has these two sons, Er and Onan. Both of them were told by God to marry one of Judah's other sons' ex-wives. They both displeased the Lord. So he killed them. He killed them. And that's how the Bible puts it. It's one of the funniest, strangest, weirdest things. He goes, and this thing that they did displeased the Lord. So God killed them. Wow. um, I hope I don't displease the Lord in that same manner. But you don't know that story? Great story. You gotta look it up. You gotta find these things. That's also from the book of Genesis. You got to find out these, these are amazing things that God has done in time past. As a matter of fact, if you look through the book of Hebrews and it talks about the Hall of Fame, and you'll see all of the great men whose Hall of Faith, whose faith absolutely blew God away. Listen, there's a great story in the Bible, it's a fantastic story in the Bible where God goes to this non-Jew. He's Italian, actually, and I like that about the guy. And he says to him, if you would come to my house, my servant is sick, but I know you can heal him. And the Lord says to him, yeah, come on, let's go. And he says to him, wait, you don't have to go to my house. Just say the word, because I too am a man under authority, I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come, and he comes. I I tell people what to do. And I know you have that much authority. All you have to do is say the word. And the Bible actually says that Jesus Christ was amazed, astonished. And in my Bible, I circle that word and write, blown mind. What's the matter? What are you whispering about? Do I have to separate the three of you now? You you said that the the centurion was... He's Italian. And I explained it to him. Italians always blow the mind of God because we have (laughs) such faith. But the idea is that faith is the one thing that blows the mind of God in a positive way. Other places in the Bible, you know what astonished God? Lack of faith. But when you have faith, listen, the only way to have faith is, does anybody know the verse I'm going to? 
Faith comes by hearing. hearing, hearing the word of God. When you start to see what God has done in the lives of these people and believe that he wants to do the same thing in your life, reading and believing and God strengthens and nourishes your faith, and you can do anything. You can do anything. And the sons of Judah after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelites, of Perez, the family of the Perizzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zerites, of the sons of Perez were of Hezron, the family of Hezronites, and Hamuel, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah according to those that were numbered of the three score and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Now, I never knew, because I used to always hear, you know, um, Abraham Lincoln's famous speech, four score, was it Abraham Lincoln, right? Four score and 17. I never knew that four score was 80. Because a score is 20. Who knew? I had to look it up and I found out. See, not only did I find out about the Bible, but I learned numbers and everything. <laughs> Three score and 16. So that's 76,500. And Judah was busy. Of the sons of Issachar, after their family, of Tola, the family of the Tolites, of Pua, the family of the Puites, of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulon and their families, of Sered, the family of the Seredites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jahil, the family of Jehilites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to them that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph, after their families. Do you guys know who Joseph is? Oh my goodness. Do you realize there is as much in the Bible about Joseph as there is about our Lord Jesus? Joseph was the one who had the dreams. You guys have all heard the story of the coat of many colors. That's Joseph. Now, you want to hear some Bible, kick some Bible knowledge at you? Do you know the coat of many colors doesn't really mean it had a lot of colors? Matter of fact, the word for many colors in there, it actually means long sleeves. So they think he had just his really long sleeves. So the many colors wasn't really like a coat with lots of colors. It's just a coat with long sleeves on it. Look it up for yourself if you think I'm lying. Joseph was in prison. God gave him a dream. He took him out. He wound up, he went from... He is, how many of you guys here saw the movie um, Gladiator? He's the one who went from a prince to a slave to second in command in all the Israel, uh, Egypt. Amazing story. You got to see what God, it, I, I want to turn there and show you guys how amazing the story is, but you know what? You got to find out for yourselves. You got to find out for yourselves. And the pictures about how he was as much as any person in the Bible a picture of our Savior. Incredible story. After their families were Manasseh and Ephraim. Oh, this is great. You guys love this. Ephraim was one of the sons of Joseph. Ephraim is the perfect picture. How many of you guys here are Jewish? Okay. He's not a picture of you. He's a picture of the rest of us. <laughs> Ephraim is a perfect picture of the Gentiles, of all the non-Jews, how as Gentiles, we became the Jews and were grafted in. Because the same thing you'll see later in the book of Revelation, that they named Ephraim, as a matter of fact, it was, it was in um, the book of <laughs> Hosea. The book of Hosea, where he talks about how Ephraim was the son that he couldn't do without. How can I give you up, Ephraim? I love you. My heart breaks for you. I love you. Though you turn your back on me, I love you. And that is the perfect picture of the Gentiles. We wanted nothing. Am I, am I messing that one up? Yeah. Phenomenal story. You've got to read about Ephraim. And you've got to see how he's the picture of that. I'm telling you, it's phenomenal. How he was the picture of the Jew, was, was a picture of the Gentile who is grafted in with the Jew. Ah, phenomenal picture. Verse 29. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Mekir, the family of Mekirites, of Mekir begat Gilead, and Gilead became the family of the Gileadites. 
These are the sons of Gilead of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Helek, the family of the Helekites, and of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and of Shemidia, Shmida, Shmida, the family of the Shmidiites, and of Hefer, the family of the Heferites. Listen, give me your attention. This is interesting too. I spoke this a while ago. Why am I reading all these things? Can I cut this down? Can, can I condense this and just get to the point? No. You know why? Because what I got to say don't mean nothing. And if nobody gets anything I'm saying here, you're getting God's word right over you. And that's all it takes. I got nothing to say. God's word got it all to say. Even if you sit here, like for instance, if I say, Alex, what'd you have for lunch on Monday afternoon? Don't remember, do you? Say, I don't remember. Thanks, that helps me out a lot. <laughs> Same thing with God's word. You might not remember what you read this morning, but somehow it just got you through the day, didn't it? Gave you enough strength. God's spiritual food is like that. You might not remember all the details. You might not remember the addresses. Listen, if you don't know John 3, 16, you just know the verse, it don't matter. Guess what? God didn't name it John 3, 16. He just gave you the word. We put those chapters and verses in there. It's okay. You don't have to remember them. They're just clanking around your brain, bouncing around, and every once in a while one comes out, whoop. And you decide, that's what Tom's here for, to tell you when you mess it up. <laughs> I meant that in a loving way. I was, I was praising, God, praising God for your memory. Verse 33. And, oh, this is so cool. Look at this. And Zelophehad, Zelophehad, the son of Hefer had no sons but daughters. And the names of his daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terza. Thus rounding out the names I won't name my next daughters. However, <laughs> these were some of the most bold, outgoing, supernaturally inspired women God ever made. And I bet most of you don't know... Zelophehad was so cool and wanted a man so much, he named his daughter Noah. I mean, that was like, you know how it's totally cool when you name a girl, like there's a girl at the gym named Ryan. Everybody thinks that's cool because she's a chick and she's got Ryan named Ryan. Now, you want to hear this? This is great. You'll love this. You know my daughter Arlie, the servant of servants at this church. Arlie was supposed to be a boy. What are you shaking your head at? No, no. Arlie was supposed to be a boy. So what happened was, because she came out a girl, I named her Arlie, which sounds like a cool name, but it's really not a cool name. It's the first letter of my name and my middle name, R. Lee. Ryan Lee, R. Lee. Huh? I was way before my, way after my time now that I think about it, because he did it a few thousand years before me. But when you name a girl a guy's name just because you wanted a girl, a boy so bad, it's cool. I mean, this girl got to walk around with the name Noah. Your name's Noah, and you're a girl? That's a guy's name, but that's kind of cool. For you guys, not always cool. No? Stop it, Kevin. <laughs> so where can you read about these girls here? Listen, we don't have to read about it. Next week in 27, you're going to see that these girls did. These girls didn't have any brothers, so you know what they did? They go to Noah and they go, hey, we don't have an inheritance because our father had no brothers and we don't think it's right. And you know what Noah says to them? I don't know what, and I said Noah. Moses says to them, I don't know what I'm supposed to do that. I got to go seek the Lord. And you know what the Lord says? You got to come back next week to find that out. <laughs> Verse 34, and these are the families of Manasseh and those that were numbered of them, 50 and 2,700. Now, I got a question. And maybe somebody can answer this and I really want to. How come sometimes he says like 50,000 and sometimes he says like three score and something, something? Why does sometimes he use the score and sometimes he doesn't? Well, 52 doesn't go in increments of 20. Yeah, but neither did 73. Um. It's good thought. I like the way you're thinking. The next time speak out with something to say. Are you sure, or are you just guessing also? Because guessing. Right. that's when he does it. Let me ask my, my, my math expert. Anybody? No, I was actually I was trying to see if there was a pattern. Don't do it now. Do it at home. But isn't that great? You see this thing? You're thinking about God's word. Now, when I was growing up, you know what we thought about? 
the baseball and the football players, the horses that were racing. We tried to remember all of this stuff, all this information that meant nothing. I can't wait to get to heaven. I mean, you're Noah. I know about I read all about you. But I thought you were the other Noah. No, that's my great, 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 great grandfather. Very cool. Very cool name, by the way, Miss Noah. These are the sons, verse 35, of Ephraim, after their families of the Shuthala, the family of the Shuthalites, of Becher, the family of Bacharites, of Tehan, the family of the Tehanites. These are the sons of Shuthala, of Eren, the family of the Erenites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim. According to those that were numbered of them, 30 and 2,500. These are the sons of Joseph after their families. The sons of Benjamin after their families. Benjamin was the youngest son of, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, that's the youngest son of, of uh, Jacob. He's an, another incredible character. To see what he goes through in the book of Genesis and how at the end, Judah, man, he does one thing that God looks down and says, man, I love that boy. Judah, who is pretty much a screw up his whole life, he says to the king of all of Egypt, listen, if this boy dies, my father will die with him. You take me instead. Let me die instead of him. God looks down at that. God, who knew the end from the beginning, said, that's just like the heart of my son who came down and died for them. And he exalted Judah so that from the very bloodline of Judah, you guys have ever heard the, word, the, the, the saying, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah? That's why God looked down at that one thing that Judah finally stood up after screwing up his whole life. He finally stood up and said, no, I've got to stand for something. Don't let my father go through this again. Take me instead of him. And God said, I am well pleased. I love it. Incredible story. The sons of Benjamin, after their families of Bela, the family of the Belites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Aharim, the family of the Aharimites, of Jufam, the family of the Jufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. Now, who names a son Hufam and Shufam? <laughs> it is my son Huf. It is my son Shuf. Hufam, Shufam. It's not like Harley and Ashlyn, you know? Hufam and Shufam. You've got to be kidding me. Hi, how you doing? My name's Gad. My name's Hufam. Now that always flipped me out also. Now listen, my name's Zebulon. My name's Joseph. <laughs> what were you taking? Zebulon? What, were you on Zebulon? Joseph. And Dan. Then there's Dan. I love Dan. Hi, I'm Dan. Nice to meet you, Dan. My name's Shufam. Dan? Where'd you come up with Dan? How do you, how do you go from Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan? <laughs> Oy vey, 12 sons. I'm running out of names. Dan it is. Go. Verse 41. The sons of Benjamin after their families and that were numbered of them were 40 and 5,600. These are the sons of Dan after their families of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites, and the families of Dan after their families. And the family of the Shuhamites, according to them that were numbered of them, were three score and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher, after their family, the Jimnu, the family of the Jimnites, Jeshu, the family of the Jeshuites, Beriah, the family of the Berites. Of the sons of Beriah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the family of Malkielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. Give me your attention. Why does he name the daughter of Asher? Somebody want to tell me? I have no idea. What did this girl do? All you'll ever hear throughout the Bible is the name of this man, the name of that man. Very few times does he name the woman's name, the daughter's name. What did this woman do? I can't find out. I have to wait till I get to heaven. That really bugs me. One of the reasons I want to die is to find out, what did Sarah, why did you name her? And the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. It's not the same Sarah that married, that married Abraham, whose later be, name became Sarai. What did she do? Is anybody, is anybody peaked like that? I am. 
These are the names of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, the Jaziel, the family of the Jazilites. Of Guni, the family of the... <laughs> don't even say it. Don't even say it. Gunites. Of Jesus, the family of the Jezerites. Of Shilam, the family of the Shilamites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children of Israel. You ready for the number? 600,000 and 1,730. I wrote the numbers down and I had to find a pattern. So for four days, I kept looking at the numbered sequence, numbered sequence. You know what I found out? Zero, nothing. I couldn't figure out nothing. Something about that number, though. I get... I love the fact that God's Word is so much smarter than me and I get to rest in it and just knowing God's doing something, man. God's doing something. Verse 52 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of the names. To many it shall be given the more inheritance, to the few shall be given the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to him that were numbered of them. Now I'll explain to you what the inheritance was. They were about to take the land of Canaan. They were just about to go in and possess it. And he tells them here, listen, I want everything, even Stephen. I'm a God of justice and I'm a God of mercy, but I'm also a God of what's called equity. Those that have a bigger tribe, you give more land. Those that have a smaller tribe, you give a smaller land. That's the way it works. Perfect equity in God's kingdom. Continuing. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot, according to the names of the tribes that the father shall inherit. According to the lot shall be the possession thereof, be divided between the many and the few. And these are they which were numbered of the Levites. Ah, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Levite. He's the last of the sons that we're going to look at. He's not the last born, but something about the Levites. Does anybody remember what the Levites were? Priests. 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 Excellent. Thank you all. They were the priests, but the Levites are also a picture of those who serve Christ. Because the body, although there's a whole big body, there's only about one-tenth maybe even less, that actually serve God, who do the ministering to the rest of the body of Christ. That's why I, remember I always said when we were going through this, if you were in here, I want us to be a church of Levites. I want us to be the Levites, the ones that are really living it. The ones that, well, Nazarite, there's, there's no, the son of, of, of uh, there's no son of Jacob named Nazarite. The Nazarite was a vow that was taken, also a good vow. As a matter of fact, I think you guys heard, my son in my, in my wife's womb, we dedicated him as a Nazarite. And the Nazarite vow was John the Baptist was a Nazarite. He was from, um, John the Baptist was from a, um, a sect called the Essenes. And the Essenes who were separated themselves from the people. Modern day, um, like uh, the, the Sephardic Jews or the Hasidic Jews, they separated themselves. Now, out of those, they would take these different vows, and sometimes they would shave their head. The Nazarite vow was just the opposite. They didn't come near any dead bodies. They never cut their hair. And they didn't drink anything anything fermented, no grapes or anything like that. So spiritually speaking, my son, from the time he was literally... Two weeks old in my wife's belly, we would, I'd lay my hands and pray over him and speak to him. And I'd say, you, Josiah, you are a Nazarite. You will never come near a dead body. You will never drink poison. And you will never cut your hair. And when I figure out what that means spiritually, I'll let you know. <laughs> because I wasn't going to raise a hippie. <laughs> Say again? Yes, and look how they were consecrated. Verse 57 says, And they were that numbered of the Levites after the families of Gershon and the family of the Gershonites of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, Merari, the family of the Merites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites, and Kohath begot Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jacobed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto him Amran, Aaron, and Moses, Miriam, their sister. Now, please, give me your attention. Before we answer that question about the Levites, because he goes back to that, watch what he says here. Does Jacobed was the daughter of Levi, who was the father of the Levites, whose mother bare to Levi in Egypt... And she bare unto Amram, Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Let me tell you something. 
you couldn't be any more blessed to say, those were my kids. Unless you could say, Ashlyn, Arlie, and Elena. Wow, how did you do that, Ryan? <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. It was a blessing. No, you had to do something. Well, I followed scripture as much as I can. I beat him up when I could. But Arlie, Ashlyn, Elena, these, you wish your kids were like this. You understand what it's like? This woman did something right. She not just, what'd I do? What happened? Huh? I always talk about him, man. Stop. <laughs> I'm saying because there's three, so I picked my three favorites, okay? What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> like I'm not joking? <laughs> yes, I like those three, my favorite. Actually, my favorite is Ashlyn. Don't tell the other ones. <laughs> Come on, guys. So Jock Bed gives birth to Aaron... Moses and Miriam. Wow. They did something right. And whatever it is, that's what I want. I want that said about my kids. Verse 60. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the weirdest stories in the whole Bible. So you have this incredible group of family members, right? And there's a, great, there's a great principle. Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. So, Aaron has Nadab and Abihu. They want to be priests, so they bring in and they light the incense. Somehow they light the incense wrong. And God goes, wrong job, and he kills them. He offered strange fire. What strange fire? I have no idea what they really did that was bad. I mean, there's speculation and there's Bible, you know, uh, intuition. But they did something that really made God mad. Now, that's got to stink to raise a kid to have God kill him and to wonder. Mm. Thank you. Move on quickly. And those that were numbered of them were 20 and 3,000, all males from a month old and upward. Now, here's where he says, watch this. For they were not numbered among the children of Israel because there was no inheritance given them among the children. They weren't given a land. You know why? Because they weren't citizens of the earth. They were citizens of heaven. Their inheritance was not given. There's a Bible verse. I don't exactly remember what it is. If anybody remembers where David wrote a psalm, and in the psalm he writes, these people were satisfied with their children. They were satisfied with things that had only earth ties. But some are satisfied with saying, my inheritance is in God. Do you know what I'm talking about? Here, he also doesn't name them 20 years old and up because from the womb they were sanctified. They were the chosen. They were set apart from the womb. So they were counted from a month old and up and not 20 years old and up. Yes, John. Numbers 18, 20. Right. Exactly. That's the, this is the perfect prophecy. Like God didn't forget. Oh, goodness, I forgot. I told Moses to write that down or something like that. He said, no, you don't have an inheritance in the land. You know why? He says it later on. I'm your inheritance. Is that what he says next verse? Hallelujah. You see that now? And you see why we are that picture now of the Levites? Continuing and finishing, here's where we bring it to a close. Verse 63, These are they which were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among them there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. Please again give me your attention. Guess what happened? Forty years they wandered in the wilderness. Do you remember why? A trip. Remember that song that we always sing? Well, we used to sing before we got this worship leader. Um, it's forty years when I know it should have took a week. 
You brought me here in 40 years. And I know this trip should take a week. They so astonished God with their lack of faith. God swore in his anger that none of them would see the promised land. No, go. So they didn't see the promised land because they didn't believe? They didn't believe. They had lack of faith in God. Over and over they tested. The Bible says, and all through the Psalms you'll read it, the history of that where they tested God in their hearts. They tested God in their hearts. And it said, at one point it actually said that God gave them food to the full so that it was coming out of their nostrils, but he gave them leanness of spirit. You want something? And here's the picture of that. Somebody prays for a Cadillac and prays for a Cadillac and they say, no, no, I went to this church and they said, whatever I ask, I must receive it. And they pray for a Cadillac and pray. God finally turns around and goes, okay, you got the Cadillac. And you know what happens? You get the payments with it. You get the fixing with it. And there is no blessing upon that at all. The more you worship something, God will give you over to that. The more you desire something that's evil, God finally says, you want it that bad? You got it. And you get everything that goes with it too. And so that's exactly that principle there. Um, So all of them died in the wilderness. For the Lord had said of them, they shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them save Caleb, the son of Jeff Puna, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Please give me your attention. Here's where we close. You can actually close your Bible if you want. There's only two people in all the thousands. I want you to know that, that the nation of Israel, even though those thousands and thousands of people died in 40 years, there are actually more people going into the land than left. So they, even though they were in the desert, they multiplied enough in 40 years that more people were going in than coming out. So God's provision upon the nation of Israel was good even in their multiplication. However, there was two of them when they went in to spy the land who pleased God. And all through those 40 years who pleased God. Joshua, the son of Nun. Caleb. Caleb is the one who said, cool names, by the way. And you guys that are pregnant here or thinking about being pregnant, cool name. Caleb and, and Joshua, great names. Caleb looked and said, Let's go now and take the land. It was a week later. They left Egypt and they said, it was a week later, let's go. We can take them. And the the rest of the spies, they said, you guys don't know about the spies? Oh man, there was 11 spies. You don't know that story? You should look it up. It's a great story. 11 spies went into the land and they came back and Caleb and Joshua won. Caleb, Caleb, let's go now. Let's take the land now. It's, it's, It's ours. And the other one's like, no, those people are giants. We're afraid. We can't do it. No, lack of faith. God said, How bad? Caleb said, no, those people will be as my bread. I'll eat them up alive. And then you know the story of Joshua. As a matter of fact, when we finish up with Deuteronomy next millennium, we're going to study the book of Joshua and see the exploits of Joshua. Now, if you know, uh, if if any of you all have been to my house, over my stove I've got this little heart thing, and in it it says, Joshua 2515, Say it again. Yes, thank you. But now in Italian. Quanto alla mia casa, il sovano è l'eterno. You have to say it with a little Italian accent. Huh? Soverano. In Italiano. No, this is in Italian, no. It's okay. You've got to have a little roll when you're Italian. Very similar. All'eterno. All'eterno. Serviano. You, know, you, you speak Italian? So what are you telling me? <laughs> oh, well, anything she says sounds way better. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now listen, sometimes you come here and I'm laying out the word for you in such a way that your heart is breaking. Sometimes I'm just feeding it to you and let God do what he wants. Did I make you hungry for God's word? Did I make you curious? Listen, even though I didn't get all, and there might be somebody here tonight. Listen, it's okay. God's word went forward to you, and it strengthened you and nourished you. It peaked you. It did something different in you. Not every time you come here do I got to do something. This is not info entertainment, guys. This is spiritual information, knowledge. Close your Bible. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. I love when David wrote, my eyes fail 
My spirit breaks from searching your righteous judgments. Lord, I remember in your word where Peter said to you, where else can we go? For you got the words of life. God, we got no place else to go. You have the words of life. And pour that life over. God, if there be one person here who just today needed the word of life poured upon them to make a decision for life, it's just, it's been so much in my heart lately, Lord. You have set before us life and death. Therefore, choose life. If there is one person in here that is contemplating death, may today they choose life. thank you that your book says that I have come to give you life and life abundantly. God, may those that are here know the abundant life. May they be modern day Nazarites, modern day Levites. God, may we serve you with everything in our hearts. We love you and thank you for your word. Bless us with a hunger and thirst for it. We ask these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.